good afternoon one and all welcome to the third session for the act atal academy sponsored faculty development program this session is conducted by professor dr acc menacheri professor menacheri serves as a vice president at qmpg Indus industrial certifications and services and leadership coach at qmpg lennar may training academy he has got nine years of his experience working with irca and Chartered Quality Institute, London for IQMS, Sai Global, a US dollar 0.6 billion professional service company as an accredited lead tutor in design and delivery of training programs. Well, he has conducted more than 1,200 third and second party audits in more than 650 organizations and trained more than 350 organizations during the period 2003 to 2021. He is trained at Harvard Graduate School of Education and on educational leadership and is an alumnus of IAM Ahmedabad. He holds an earned PhD in Emotional Intelligence and Managerial Effectiveness and trained in both Applied and Clinical Psychology, Philosophy, Management, Marketing and HR. He has served the boards of a few companies during 2009 and 2018 and possessed 24 years of experience in industry academics and has served as a professor adjunct professor and dean at different management schools is a renowned author and has written nine books one book chapter 26 articles and one monograph i welcome you sir for your presentation thank you hello sir so yeah, yeah. Oh, good morning to all so uh, we will start with today's session it's a continuation of yesterday's uh, session i welcome dr rcc and uh, dr kisali ma'am to the faculty development program organized by national college of pharmacy sir over to you sir so uh, am i audible yes sir am yes I sir audible? yes sir you're audible sir uh, can you see my screen now sir yes sir yes sir, can can you, sir? yes yeah so ideas to creation thinking to action imagination to uh, experimentation brought to creativity retrospective so this is what we are going to deal today so i'll take just five minutes to recap over we all have understood that ever the international technical standard that education uh iwa international work group agreement uh, that was signed by more than 70 member countries across the world they have decided there are four basic processes in education that is one is education design second is curriculum development next one is education delivery and assessment of learning there are basically four sub process in the core process of education whenever we uh, discuss about uh, pre and post covid uh, period major changes are there for education delivery and assessment of learning where there is a shift from offline mode to online mode are there and perhaps online mode may continue if covid is not going to end up so there, there are possibilities of digital disruption if covid 19 is going to continue so there would be changes especially in the area of education delivery as well as assessment of learning maybe Curriculum development as well as education design may almost remain the same where a validation is required in both education delivery as well as assessment of learning. That is the basic need. Now, what is the relationship differences between verification and validation is that, you know, verification is, I'm just repeating, it's just verifying whether the course completion or schedule or the syllabus or completion of activities all are being very okay yes yes it's almost like a ticking everything but validation is whether the specific intended use of design whether the teaching and learning effectiveness as per the design are there related to the six dimensions of bloom's taxonomy commencing from remembering to creation that is to make things happen well so we, we again discussed yesterday about different type of risks in education called as cognitive risks uh, as very specially uh, online teaching that is risk in memory comprehension understanding concept formation then uh, risk in creation and reasoning analysis and judgment as well as risk in creation again discuss about uh, the design requirements that may be uh, you know implemented in a implemented by a university or a cbsc or an icsc curriculum that also need to be integrated especially the formative assessment requirements and our edu national education policy also require, uh, you know, a formative assessment need to be undertaken rather than summative assessment or coaching culture. So that is as per our new education policy. Then we discuss assessment that is one of the foremost part of, uh, you know, formative assessment that assess 
the lo it's a longitudinal way of capturing the data of students regarding their overt behavior on various parameters. So that is formative assessment we discussed. Finally, we got into the direct mode. There are a lot of differences, uh, uh, around 12 differences we already discussed yesterday. And we also came about a revalidation strategy for each, uh, you know, online mode. And uh, we discussed about uh, chat, chat box brainstorming, chat box energizing, then uh, making them speak. Then uh, we also discussed about breakout room formation. Uh, so physical movement techniques, all those we discussed. Again, we discussed about the using mind mapping techniques. Uh, uh, again, uh, how to use a quality plan that we are going to discuss uh, during the coming slides. And again, uh, we also discussed about how in future, uh, you know, uh, summative assessment may be undertaken from homes using an artificial intelligence based software called as Proctor U. You can Google about that. So there are a lot of artificial intelligence based uh, uh, assessments, uh, assessment, summative assessment methodologies are coming out. We all discussed about that. And we also discussed about three learner appro approaches uh, where a uh, student is being considered as a customer or a consumer and student as a raw material being transformed to a finished product as well as a student as a learner. Each co-learner learn the student and together we create a learning environment. See, this, this has evolved in our Indian culture. Even in Ayurveda, when you go to an Ajarya or an Ayurveda physician, uh, based on your darshana, sparshana, and shravana, based on your, uh, you know, three, three balancing your pit, kabha, kabha, pitta, and all those things, uh, considering your weight, he will uh, design a, 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 a medicinal uh, formulation for you, within, uh, only for you, not as batches. So this is a concept of, uh, uh, you know, identifying a particular person and designing a unique, unique patient experience for him. So we follow that in India. When British British education system came to India, and when they started uh, processing uh, students as batches, everything uh, you know shifted. And now we follow a British system, a colonial system of education. And uh, if you uh, just look back to our history of education, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, then uh, Ravindranath Tagore, uh, as well as Sri Aurobindo, all of them tried to you know implement a new system. Uh, of uh, learner centric uh, student centric uh, uh, you know education and the very base of all this is considering student as a learner teacher as a co-learner and together uh, create and design a learning environment with this i am stopping my uh, uh, recaps so uh, okay now if you look at how can we identify an individual uh, learning requirement of a student even though we are processing them as batches how we can do that if you look at uh, towards the left hand side okay uh, we have defined the broad objective of education as uh, to enhance the power of expression how see there are different process stages and there are different expected requirements right from remembering to creation so uh, even though uh, we all talk about creation practice based etc etc more than 70% of the marks are being assigned for rot memory or repetition. Okay, so now we have to focus on the lower domains first. Towards the end of the class, we have to ask questions to test the comprehension concept for formation and verbal expression. So towards the end of the class, the method is ask questions. The expected outcome is, okay, I have handled a class for one hour, whether my students has understood it or not. So how? You are testing comprehension, concept formation, and verbal expression. And you are validating your that particular day's class whether the concept has been understood by the student. So we have you can have how you will do it. You can have a random sampling. Maybe you have 50 students in your class. You ask select students in a random way, select five students, ask questions to five students, close it. The next day of the class, when they come for the next class, start with questioning techniques. Again, check the short term memory, verbal expression, and comprehension. Again, take a random sample, five. And next week of the class, after seven days, again, you have to ask questions what has been taught during the previous week. Again, random sampling, you record it. Then when you provide assignments, whether formative, summative, or ongoing assignments, you check their ability to analyze, interpret relationship between two variables, reasoning, and written expression, and have a record. 
when you when you give them as projects field studies or lab again you are verifying and validating their creative thinking critical thinking problem solving and written expression tacit knowledge that is experiential knowledge have a data analysis for that and at work that is not in the scope and in life okay so expressions expression is written expression as well as verbal expression as well as in life how we ex respond to different situations i mean i faced a challenge in my life i committed suicide that means in life in life i am not at all expressing myself in the uni in, in, in the right way because i failed when I, when i faced with a problem i committed suicide so i am not i am not able to express myself in my life in the right way so now i am going to take a one month data this is how we do continuous formative assessment uh, so it's a one month data of uh, the real time data of few students that uh, you know dr gisel has uh, made it so this is the first uh, see date, dates are there towards left hand side 3 10 20 then 6 10 20 7 10 8 10 9 10 so dates are there fa anecdotal so now you will go to the next one see this is abbreviation fa anec that means formative assessment using anecdotal assessment then fad formative assessment using daily assessment that is ongoing then ca faca formative assessment using continuous assessment what is one code for conformance what is two code for non-conformance then total da that is total for daily assessment then total ane total for anecdotal assessment then total ca total for continuing assessment so these are the abbreviations that you could see over here so fa anec fada then faca then fada total da total fanec and faca so there are 24 students who are perfect that who, who, where the formation is going perfect therefore we need not intervene at all they are perfect students now see every question every day that has been answered they have got a total marks of 100 observe this now go to this slide where you know they have not at all these are next category that size they, they require slight improvement see the above students need improvement and are categorized as potential students for perfect formation they are considered to be a potential students for perfect formation now you are getting a graph now you can put it as a graph that analysis of data this is next stage and third stage is you know see the above students need improvement and categorized as above average students and need little push to come up now we are categorizing students from a one month data hope you are able to follow me we are categorizing students from a one month data but students know don't know about it because if students comes to know about it that becomes labeling be very careful if students comes to know about how we are formatively assessing them that unconsciously becomes a labeling so don't do that it is only for our data internal data okay so then comes free average students that need improvement critical non conformance that need urgent intervention color code red color code blue is average students that need improvement color code red critical non conformance that need urgent intervention color code dark blue non conformance and intervention required and color code yellow need intervention look at this so we just require one month observe careful observation of our students based on our continuous formative assessment plan to judge whether a student is uh, whether a student were push whether we need to confront certain students or not just one month is required to assess or understand our student now we are co-learning the student this is what this is a system that we developed that is why i told um, this is pending for a process uh, patent okay we applied in uk so just one month if you take classes and if you are focused if you are committed to whatever you teach okay uh, you just with your one month data to assess your students and how intervention can be made so that they could improve or not this is a real time data dr gisela has did in her uh, classes when she was handling classes so we only designed it and testing has been done at the first stage and i am happy to share this with you so that you can test in your schools and you can see a sea of change i am very serious about it so so we always nba and nac are good systems but that focus at a macro level and we need a micro intervention at an individual teacher level and that we need to demonstrate commitment for that this is what why i i coined this workshop as 
ideas to action. So we need to act. And our education policy very clearly talks about, you know, uh, continuous formative assessment. And now how we can put it into practice, implement it in our real life as a professor or as a, or as a teacher uh, or, or as a, a, as a uh, you know, uh, trainer. Now, if it is a long duration program, LDP, not this is not applicable for one week programs, basically. This is applicable for long duration programs, at least for two semesters. Okay, or three time trimesters. So within one month, you will get a clear idea about your about your each and individual student, and you have co-learned them. You have co-learned them, co-learned the student, each student, and you know the strength of weakness. You have made the anecdotal assessment. You have continuing assessment. You have made a you know you have made a uh, daily assessment, and uh, you have made everything, and you know within one month where my student will be after two years. Now you are a psychologist. You know every teacher is need to be a psychologist because that is that, that is the reality. Now you can make any type of interventions to bring them up. Even though we are processing them as batches, even though processing them as, as batches, now we have a choice to intervene by accepting and connecting them. First, we need to demonstrate acceptance and connection, emotional connection. Then only we can influence any person. This is the basic reality. So emotionally connect, accept them, and you know demonstrate your uh, approachability. Uh, communicate with them, work with them, understand their problems, support them, be an enabler. If you are able to practice this, the whole thought process, the ideas will we can put it into action. Please understand. So this is if we can practice at an individual level, every teacher has to take initiative. So NBA won't support the, uh, support enhance this. Uh, and that won't enhance this. Any EFQM methods or anything, nothing is going to, you know, enhance this. But if I take an initiative as a teacher, and if I am committed to teaching and to serve my students, we will live truly to our purpose. I am sure about that. So this is what I prefer to tell about, uh, you know, continuous formative assessment and uh, a quality plan for formative assessment. Now I will repeat this once again so that you will understand it. In fact. <laughs> a continuous formative assessment is done uh, con considering our uh, risks in education such as this has been designed in considering this see based on this now we have risk in education such as risk, risk in memory short term and long term risk in comprehension and understanding risk in formation risk in analysis interpretation reasoning relationship and judgment and risk in creation that is to make things happen these are the risk on the left hand side you can see we are relating this with Bloom's taxonomy. For oh, fine, I hope this is clear for you. Now I want you to, you know, check, go, go and observe this uh, evaluation model. Okay. Now we are ev evaluating. We are evaluating right from uh, their short term and long term, long term memory. Okay. First we check their short term memory. Then we check the long term memory. We check comprehension, concept formation, verbal expression for. Everything we have a record, daily record, and we are not doing for everyone on a particular day. We spend just five minutes. We ask five questions to five students. If we have 10 students, 100 students in our class, we ask 10 questions. And over a period of one month, we can ask questions to everyone and we can have a record. So every day before commencing the class, take a, you know, take a commitment to oneself that I will ask questions to five students and I will be non-judgmental. See, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, there is a professor at I, I am Ahmedabad. His name is uh, Dr. Erna Blaha. Erna Blaha. He is a professor respected by every student in I am Ahmedabad. He always used to get uh, the best professor award. He's a product of Indian Statistical Institute. He also taught me. So while coming to class, after coming to class, he will open his laptop. In, in in Excel, he will he will take a random number. There is a method to take random numbers in Excel. He will take a uh, uh, random number. And we were all senior professors or, you know, uh, post 35 with at least 10 years of experience from across India and even from, uh, uh, you know, uh, and also professors from uh, uh, Africa was there. Around 40, 40 professors were there. He used to ask questions to us and he will record it. Please understand, I am not telling a joke. 
these systems are being practiced in one of the best mecca of management education i am ahmedabad so if they can such great professors can do that uh, why don't we so are we ready to take uh, uh, are we ready to take uh, responsibility for our students not to process as the batches to understand the learning requirement the unique re learning requirement of every student and to provide a solution and to act as enablers this will change the entire system and if i take a decision today and if you take a decision today this is going to change the entire system our children will blossom bloom bloom up and uh, contribute to nation and humanity as we all believe in vasudeva kudumbam right so let us take a pledge today so that we can practice this we can practice this continuous formative plan we can practice this continuous formative assessment plan and uh, we will implement it for ourselves now what we'll do so this is an internal pattern after doing this uh, we will design a remedial learning environment via online mode this is being planned for science and now the, the model i've been given is for science subjects as well as math subjects right so you know we can categorize a student categorize our student after one of the two tasks from a basic intermediate advanced or very advanced but don't expect don't share this to students so that unconscious labeling will happen now benchmark them on different competency level then you can implement different type of remedial design remedial remedial learning environment for them like bridge courses problem solving in classrooms maybe you know you can help design a peer group and among the peer group they can have problem solving via online and corrective action also may be implemented so basic level clarify doubts in whatsapp or class classes clarify doubts to redo the problems clarify doubts peer learning or redo the problems clarify doubts peer learning redo the problems so you categorize into different competency level and design different remedial environment via online mode because that is going to the possibility next possibility please understand uh, so i hope you understood uh, how we can also design a remedial learning uh, by implementing a continuous formative assessment during the first month itself and please understand later later your intervention or my intervention should enable them empower them to study more and develop interest in the subject then only what will happen change would happen then only we will we are co-learning the learner and we are trying to implement a remedial session